Hi everybody, it is Julie from Pages and Pens. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm here to talk to you about my favorite debut or new to me authors that I read in 2018. Let's jump right into it. All right guys, so I read a lot of new to me authors in 2018, but as you guys have already seen, if you haven't, I will link them in cards up above and in the description box down below. I read a lot of great books. I'm not going to be mentioning any authors that I've already talked about in my favorite 2018 release books or my backlist favorite books. These are all authors that were new to me this year or debuted this year that I read that are not on my favorite books list even though some of these are favorite books. Does that make sense? Like they didn't make the top 10 of those lists, but these authors were still new to me this year and I still really love their work. So we're gonna jump into it with a cheaty one because I, I can do these things. And that is Bridget Kemmerer. I had never read her before and I got a, an arc of A Curse So Dark and Lonely, which comes out at the end of January and really enjoyed it. This is a Beauty and the Beast retelling with like a whole different spin on it. Like the beast is not a beast all the time. He has a season to try to get the girl to fall in love with him. And then at the end of that, if he's unsuccessful, he turns into a beast and starts killing the people of his kingdom, which gives him more incentive every single time he tries to get the girl to fall in love with him. And it was a really interesting take on it. The main character has cerebral palsy and I really enjoyed the representation for that as well. I thought it was a really interesting spin on things. I super, super enjoyed it and really liked her writing style. So this one for sure became an author that I'm going to keep on my radar. I want to read some of her backlist and I definitely want to keep up with the rest of this because I don't believe this is a standalone. I believe this is still a series. You guys can uh, recommend what else from her I should read from her backlist because I really liked her. Then here's a book that is by somebody that I've definitely talked about before and that is Laura Silverman. Laura Silverman wrote Girl Out of Water and the reason why I found her was because she was kind of blacklisted, been very outspoken about politics and about equal rights. She spoke her mind which is completely her right and then this neo-Nazi group got her name, followed her onto Goodreads and gave her like one star reviews and wrote horrible things on her Goodreads page and pretty much killed the release of this book. So I picked it up because I wanted to support her and actually really enjoyed it. It wasn't like my favorite book of the year, but it was really well written. It's about a girl who goes from like an ocean town where like surfing is her life to a landlocked town to help her family out. And she's trying to adapt and she's meeting new people. I think her main love interest is a boy of color with one arm. So there's like disability rep and just all around. It was really, really well done. The friend groups were great. The family dynamics were great. I liked the way they were all developed. It's my kind of contemporary for sure, but this was an author that I definitely wanted to support and I will be looking out for more from her because I think that that's just completely shitty that that happened. And then I also really enjoyed her book. Like if I hadn't enjoyed her book, I probably would have left it there, but I actually really did enjoy this book. So if you're interested, you should pick it up. It was real good. An author that I really enjoyed but I don't have a physical copy is Thea DeSalle and she wrote The King of Bourbon Street which was a smutty book club book hangover book of the month and I loved her writing. She wrote plus size main character. She wrote really diverse uh, representation and I can't wait to continue with the series. She blew me away for fat girl rep in a book. It was amazing. It was super super smutty and like just and checked all my boxes for smut or like a book in general or fat rep in general. So I will definitely be keeping track with her and reading more of her backlist and more of her upcoming books because I super enjoyed that book. If you guys want a smutty rack or some great fat girl rep in a smut, definitely check out The King of Bourbon Street. It's phenomenal. My one contention is the girl on the, mo the cover model does not look at all like the main character, which is shitty but I will absolutely be keeping up with Theodore Sal for sure. I'm gonna get controversial. I'm gonna talk about Children of Blood and Bone, which I enjoyed. I tabbed up, I read it. I really, really liked it when this came out and I really liked Tomi Adeyemi on social media as an author talking about her process, being excited about her book, crying about the release and just, I got wrapped up in her excitement and her social media presence. And then the more I've kept track with her, the more I don't want to touch it. I don't like spilling tea. I don't like being involved in like the drama that authors go to, but like she came down on a very popular well-known author who I guarantee you had no idea she existed and uh, attacked her for using a similar title to CBB when this other author's title had been claimed and like marketed, like set in stone before this released. And despite the fact that there's no copywriting on titles, 
at all. You can have a thousand books that are literally titled Children of Blood and Bone and you cannot copyright the actual title. Girl's crazy. Like, what is she thinking? I don't want to touch that at all. That's insanity. Nope. But I will say I really did enjoy this. Is it perfect? No. It's a debut novel. She's definitely still learning, but it was really well done. I really liked it. I know some people said that it was supposed to be like a take on Avatar and then they were upset because it wasn't Avatar-y enough. I was fine with it. I thought the magic system was pretty interesting. I thought the mythology behind it was really interesting. I think the representation in it is fantastic and important. Every character in this is a person of color, but this is dark and problematic. The main love interest, the main relationship in this is super problematic. It's very violent. There's graphic scenes of torture. I liked it. It was good for a debut. So like as a debut goes or a new to me author goes, I really enjoyed this when I read it. Now I'm a little nervous about it, but I still really enjoyed it. So I wanted to talk about it. Then I wanted to talk about Bonnie Sue Hitchcock and The Smell of Other People's Houses. I don't know if she has other books out. She must, right? I don't think this is a debut, but she was new to me. And man, did this little tiny book make me cry. It packed a punch. This is one of those things where there's like a little thread that weaves everything and you don't see it until they pull at the whole picture at the end and like pinch it together. And it is gorgeous. It's so well crafted. I really enjoyed it. What she was able to do in this small little book about like 1970s Alaska and whether or not they joined the lower 50 and these small towns and these small town lives and these children was amazing. I really loved it. Like it was gorgeous. I just... I can't speak highly enough about this. It's a great one for a contemporary readathon. It's nice and short. In fact, contemporary a thon in February, if you haven't read this yet, save this for contemporary a thon in February. It may or may not fit a challenge. Keep this one in mind if you haven't read it yet. Another one is Tara Sim and Timekeeper, which guys, I had a lot of thoughts about. This one was so good. This is a historical fantasy where clocks like control time. So each town has a clock tower and that clock and that clock's health determine how time functions within that town. So if something breaks on the clock and the clock slows down, the whole town slows down and they start losing time. If the clock breaks completely, that town freezes. It is so interesting. It has a queer romance. It is so well done. I really enjoyed it. I have the sequel, Chainbreaker. The third book, I believe, already came out and I cannot or is coming out? No, the third book is coming out in 2019. I really want to read Chainbreaker soon so I can get to this. I really enjoyed Tara Sims writing. I really enjoyed this book. It is so underhyped and so under talked about on booktube. It doesn't make my top 10 of my backlist titles, but it is a great new to me author that I can't believe I was sleeping on. There are a couple people talking about this author and this book series, but like in general, go read this book. Like it is so good. So good. Then we have Bad Romance by Heather Demetrios. This is a good book. I have all the tabs, all the feels, lots of tears, lots of emotions. This one follows an abusive relationship and it's more emotional abuse and like that slow build of like, is this bad? Should this bother me? Uh, maybe I'm just being sensitive. And then it builds and builds and builds until you're in a situation where you've allowed things to happen and you feel like you don't have a right to be upset when things escalate and then you don't know what to do. And it follows a high school girl and she's young and she's trying to get out of this situation. It was gorgeous. It was heartbreaking and there's tons of trigger warnings, but it was really, really beautiful. And my first book by Heather Demetrios, even though I know it's not her first book, I am looking forward to reading more from her. I haven't yet. Holy crap, this book really moved me, really stuck with me. It wasn't a top 10 book, but it was amazing for my first reading experience from her. And if you haven't read from her before, or if you have and you haven't read this one yet, I highly recommend it if you can handle that kind of subject matter. Phenomenal. Then I have Spellbook of the Lost and Found by Moira Foley Doyle. This one is a magical realism -y. It's kind of contemporary, kind of magical, kind of gives me the Wicked Deep, Summer of Salt, uh, Ava Lavender type of vibes about a friend group. It's like two dual timeline friend groups and uh, their relationships to one another and to magic. And they cast this spell to try to find lost things. And then the price for that is that other people have to lose things for you to find things. And it creates this like vicious cycle. But the friend groups in this, guys, the family dynamics in this, you know I'm a sucker for found families. 
and the friend groups and the dynamic in this one and the mystery in this one were so intriguing, so enthralling. I loved the way it was written. It's super hella queer, really diverse. I loved everything about this book. It checks so many of my boxes that I really, really enjoy in a novel with the exception of like a psychological aspect, I guess. Everything else though, this is my kind of book. Like this is perfection for me and I super, super enjoyed it. Again, I read a lot of great books this year, so it didn't make a top 10. It was worth mentioning in terms of authors because the way this was crafted makes it, it hard for me to believe that her other books are not as stunningly crafted. So I'm excited to read more from her. Haven't yet, really excited to. Then we have another one that really surprised me, and that is Margaret Rogerson's Enchantment of Ravens, which I've heard really mixed things about, but I freaking loved. I thought this was a really great, unique take on Faye. I thought it was really inventive. I thought it was a beautiful look at craft and having a passion as a writer. Having a passion is a very big identifier for me. Our main character is an artist. She's a painter. And for me, I saw so many similarities to me and writing. And if I had to give up writing to become Faye or if I had to, like what I would do to hold on to my craft, what I would do to protect my family, hold on to my passion, stay true to myself. And it was so interesting. I really enjoyed this and I thought that the way that the author approached the topic and Faye in general and her take on all of it was really well done and really super like honed. I enjoyed this so much. I am not even sure if this is a debut. I'm excited for more. Another book by her comes out this year, I think. I'm a horrible booktuber, guys, but I can't wait to read more from her. She's definitely an author that I am keeping an eye on because like, whoa, man, I really enjoyed, really enjoyed this book. And I went into it with very low expectations because everybody was saying it wasn't really that great. I disagree. I don't know why I'm ending on this one, but I just am. It's a book that blew my mind by an author that blew my mind. I don't know if I have it in me to read more from them, but holy shit, this had to make a list this year. And that is House of Leaves by Mark Danielowski, Mark Z. Danielowski. This is such an experience. This is an actual reading experience. I tried to buddy read this. Most of the people backed out of it and couldn't handle it, but I freaking fell in love. This is a story about a haunted house and it is not a haunted house, just like a scary, creepy house. Like the outside dimensions don't match the inside dimensions. Like there's extra spaces, places, and hallways pop out of nowhere, and vast voids are created in these ha- Like it is creepy and awesome and amazing, but it's told in two POVs, one from somebody who lived in the house and one from somebody who has these papers about the home and their declining mental health as they dive deeper into the study of this house and then the declining mental health of the family that lives in there and what this house does to them. It was so creepy, but so well crafted. Like as a writer, I can't imagine crafting something like this. This had crazy mixed media, crazy like, you think Jay Kristoff did weird annotations? No, no, like empty page, a couple words down here. We have like, pages with like a word on the page. These are mirror image boxes. Like you have to read that in a mirror, which is not as bad as it sounds because like actually if you just turn the page, it's the right way. It's just like a mirror of that side. Anyway, like the text blocks are all funky. This point on, this is like indexes that you're referencing throughout the, like the whole book. It's almost like a choose your own adventure. Like you have to choose if you go back to this index and then that's going to make you like jump a little bit. There's one part in here where you have to like decode like a hidden message from his mother that's just batshit crazy. Like it is the wildest goddamn ride. It is the wildest ride and it was so well done. He blew my mind. Can I read more from him? I don't know. I can't stop thinking about this book. So it had to make a list. It wasn't a best of but like damn if this isn't a new to me author that is going to stick with me for a very long time. So those are my 10 new to me or debut authors from 2018 that just like blew my mind that I'm keeping my eyes on. I want to read more from. 
I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave me down below like an author that was new to you this year. Again, there were more new to me authors. A lot of my best of from 2018 and backlist were new to me authors. I will have a stat video later, like next week probably, that will have all of the breakdown of like how many new to me and how many known authors I read this year. That is everything for this video. If you liked it, be sure to give me a big thumbs up, click subscribe, click that notification bell so you know when I put out new videos, and I will see all of you in the next one. Bye guys. Hey, no, I hate that.